Welcome to the Sober Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Anderson. I decided to end my decade-long love affair with alcohol in 2012 at 29 years old. I chose to live openly as a recovering alcoholic with honesty and humor while figuring it out one day at a time. This space will bring you weekly episodes of my own personal experiences with my addiction and sobriety, as well as me interviewing incredible souls who are living life without drugs and alcohol. This podcast is here to inspire you, empower you, uplift you, and bring you some laughter along the way in your own journey. Sit back, relax, and let's have a time. Hi, welcome to the Sober Vibes Podcast. I am your host, Courtney Anderson. You are listening to episode 56. Oh yeah, trucking right along. Always excited every time I record an episode with the guests, with my sister, with myself. Um, Just happy we're here, you know, and being able to record this podcast is a blessing. Especially talking about sobriety, recovery, everything under that umbrella, because there's a lot. And always hearing other people's stories of where they started and where they are in present day. Before we get started on this topic today, which I think is a fabulous one, especially going into this holiday weekend, because it's the first holiday weekend of the summer season. And I know how triggering these holiday weekends can be, those first couple years of sobriety. It's hard. It is really hard, especially if you were like me, a little piglet who went out and just raged (laughs) and got completely fucked up and spent the whole weekend in a blackout and or drunk. I mean, you don't have to, you know, the extreme, you don't always have to be in a blackout, but just pissing away another holiday weekend and then waking up on, you know, that Monday, Tuesday being like, oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? Who did I jam? What is happening? Because those questions really do come to your mind. Who did I piss off to? What I say? All of that. Anyways, just a reminder, if you are looking for coaching in your journey, I have my one-on-one coaching and my sober focus group coaching program. There is a workshop in there every month along with four meetings, discount codes, community, all of that jazz. So check out the link in the announcements or visit my website, CourtneyRecover.com and check out Go Under Sober Focus. So as I said, this conversation actually stemmed from earlier in the month in my Sober Focus community. And, you know, I'm sure I've said this proudly in season one or throughout this way, but sometimes people need to hear it seven to 10 times before it really sticks. So today we're going to talk about whether or not you want to be sober, in all honesty, because when it comes to this, if there is a problem, if drinking has become problematic for you, and that can manifest in a lot of different ways. Again, it does not have to be the extreme of blacking out and ending up in a stranger's bed. However, it can be as simple as waking up with severe anxiety, chest pain, you know, not showing up as a mother as you want to. It it just, it's different for everybody. But you have to choose if you want to live a life without alcohol. So, in sober focus, we were talking about it, and it was, you you just can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't. At the end of the day, if it's problematic, if it's become toxic, if this is something you can no longer control, then you have to make that decision. Because I would really like to meet somebody who has had a relationship with drinking where it's been very problematic, and then they have it under control now. Uh, seriously, give me introduce me to five people where this has happened from, where this is how it starts. And I did this for four years. That's where the moderation drinking category falls into, or even if you want to go under the whole gray area drinking. Does it be and eventually become a problem or an issue? Like, what is the deal here? So for four years, I tried moderating trying to control it by saying, oh, I'm not going to do shots. I'm not going to mix wine and Grey Goose dirty martinis. 
I'm not going to do A, B, and C. I'm only going to drink beer. I'm only going to drink once a week. I mean, do you know how tiresome that is to try to control something that has control over you? I'm not asking you to surrender right now while you're listening to this, because I know people have an issue with that. But (laughs) if you keep going around on this cycle, and it's doing the same thing over, over, over again, and expecting different results when that's not going to happen, because this has taken over into something you no longer can control. Even if you stop drinking, okay, then you go like 30 days and you're like, all right, cool, I got this. And then go back to drinking and you simply start, you know, drinking, everything's fine. And then within a matter of two, three, four weeks, you are back to where you ended when you, before you took that break. How many times has this happened to you? I did it for four years before I said enough was enough. (laughs) And, you know, was was given that choice and that opportunity to start doing things differently. And the one thing I had to do differently was give up alcohol because it was not fitting into my life anymore. And again, for women as we age, alcohol is not on our side especially when you have to go through menopause and all of that stuff. It's just, it's not good, especially if you're on medication and mixing alcohol with your medication. That is not good because your medication is not properly working. So again, this is where you have to decide how bad do you want it. And I'm not saying that you cannot relapse because that is part of the journey, but you can't keep trying to fit, what is it? A, a square into a round hole. <laughs> is that the saying? You, you just can't when it's no longer working for you. And this is what I had to tell that person. I had to say, you need to decide if you want to be sober or not. And if you don't, own it and be fine with your decision. And that's okay if that is the route you want to go. But if it's to the point where you're like, no, you know, I don't, I going out with a friend If going out with a friend one night after you've had like a week or two of not drinking is making you already think, I can go out and have one with this person because I'm not going to end up being a hot mess. But then it eventually, that one drink then eventually leads you within the next two weeks to be, you know, pounding them back by yourself where nobody knows because you're doing this by yourself. And that would be closet drinking. (laughs) <laughs> then, which I've done a lot, I have, then that's a problem. Then it's an issue that you really need to try, but you have to try and you have to take it where I know it's it's a day at a time, but seriously, don't put yourself in that type of social situation. And you do have to sacrifice in your early sobriety. When I say early sobriety too, I'm almost talking about those first three years. I'm not saying all the time, though, with the sacrifice, but like early sobriety, even up to five years. I mean, nobody, it's not people just fucking give up alcohol one day and they're cured. This is a progress and progression. And you cannot fuck with that timeline because your timeline is your own. So if you're feeling a way of already justifying how many drinks you're going to have going out after you've had a week sober, you need to not go out and sit your ass at home in quilt. I I don't know. It's just to the point of you have to make the decision like, I'm not ready yet to go out. But if you are ready to go out and you have made the decision, like, okay, you know what, I'm not going to drink tonight. Because these friends of yours, other people in your life cannot fucking force you to drink unless your mouth is open, where they're making your mouth be open and pouring liquor down your throat. Yes, peer pressure is a bitch. But that's where you have to stand up on your own two feet if you're a 25, 30, 35, 37, 40, 50, however old you are, be a 40-year-old fucking boss and say, I'm not going to do this to myself anymore because I deserve better. So I'm either going to sit my ass at home or I'm going to go out and decide beforehand I'm not even drinking. And then two... If it comes up where a friend's like, do you want to drink? All you have to simply say is no. And then if they push you, always use the COVID excuse, okay? 
because we still have that. <laughs> nope, just not drinking right now. My anxiety is a little bit out of whack because of this whole COVID situation, as is many millions and millions of millions of people around the world. Their anxiety is elevated after, you know, a year and a half of this. So make the decision. Do you want to live a life alcohol-free and sober, or do you still want your cake and eat it too? And if you do, it's cool. Own it and just know that you can always go back. If it's not working out for you, you can always continue to try to live a life without alcohol, but you really got to give yourself a full try. And that's where I say, give yourself 90 days without alcohol and see how you feel. 30, yes, cool. But then after 30, it's like, 30 is too short. It's an improvement, but it's too short where you start feeling a little bit more of the benefits after 90 days without alcohol, especially too if alcohol was a huge part of your life. I hope this episode helped you out today to figure out what you want. And going into the summer, remember you can have fun. There is fun past your addiction, past the relationship with alcohol. I am living proof of it. I have fun sometimes just staring out the window because it's a state of mind, but at least I'm not in that continuous cycle, anxiety-ridden, hangover, not loving myself cycle, because that shit's the pits, man. It is the pits. So, all right. If you haven't yet, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. If you ever need me, I am here for you. You can email me sobervibes at gmail.com or reach out to me on Instagram on my Sober Vibes account and just let me know what you think of this episode. All right, keep on trucking and have a wonderful holiday weekend.